3.3 number 12. Find the slope of the following equation, y equals minus 3x plus 8. What we're going to do is compare this equation to the slope-intercept form of the equation of a, of a straight line. So the slope-intercept form tells us that if you have the equation in the format y equals mx plus b, the m, or the coefficient of x, is the slope, and the b is going to be, which is the constant term being added, is the uh, y value of the y-intercept, and I'm just going to call it y-intercept. So we can identify the slope just by looking here and saying the coefficient of x is minus 3. So y equals minus 3x plus 8 means slope is minus 3. Y-intercept b is 8, but that's the y value of the y-intercept. So the y-intercept, you got to show that x is 0 at the place where y is the b value of 8. So the question was just asking for slope, so our slope is minus 3. The slope is the coefficient of x when you have it in this format right here. And let's fit another problem in here. We've got 3.3 number 14. Find the slope again. All right, well, we want to compare it to the slope-intercept form. So let's rewrite that again. Slope-intercept form y equals mx plus b. Well, the equation is not in the right format yet because x and y terms are on the same side. We want y to be all by itself on the left. And that means we need to solve for y in our equation 3x minus 5y equals 10. Once we solve for y, we know that the coefficient of x is the slope. To solve for y, we want to use the regular process of solving a linear equation. We want to isolate y on the left side here. So that means the minus 5 needs to go away, and so does the 3x. Always start with adding and subtracting. So we're going to first subtract 3x so that it cancels out and goes to 0. That's OK as long as we subtract it from the right side. So we're left with negative 5y equals 10 take away 3x. All right, and I don't do 10 minus 3 because these are not like terms. I just leave it 10 take away 3x. And I'm just going to rewrite this and put the x term first, which I could have done right away. And the reason why is because the slope-intercept form that we're comparing with always has the x term first. All right, so when you move terms around, make sure you keep the sign in front of the term with the term. So take away 3x is negative 3x here. 10 is plus 10. Now we want to divide both sides by negative 5, and that's going to make the minus 5 go away from the y, and it'll isolate the y for us. And if I do that over here, I have to do it to each term. I can't just do it to one of the terms. The entire right side is being divided by minus 5. So now I have y equals minus minus gives me a plus, so I have 3 fifths x plus and a minus give me a takeaway or a negative. 10 over 5 is 2. Now I have it in the right format. I can compare it to mx plus b. Slope, which is what we were asked to find, is 3 fifths. It's the coefficient of x. If we were asked to find the y-intercept, the y-intercept would be well, the value of the y-intercept, the y-value of it, would be negative 2. And at the y-intercept, x is always 0. Looks like we can fit in some more problems, so let's go to 3.3 number 15. Find the slope. y equals 5. Well, okay, this is in the right format, right? We want to compare it to y equals mx plus b. But there's some stuff missing. All we have is a constant term. We don't have the x term. But we could say, and let's just bring this guy down here, 
y equals, we have 0 as the coefficient of x. 0 times x would make the x go away, and that's why there's no x up here. So we have 0 times x plus 5, right? This is basically the same thing as y equals 5. It just has 0 times x in there. Well, that must mean the slope is 0. All right, so that's one way of looking at these. If the x term is not there, then the slope has to be 0 to make the x go away. The other way you can look at these is to graph them. So if we have y equals 5, and we want to make a graph of it, if y equals 5, well that means y is always 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There's y equals 5 y is always 5, no matter what x is, would be this line here. A horizontal line always has a zero slope. All right, so that's another way that you could think about that slope. And let's look at another one, 3.3 number 16. Find the slope, x equals negative 2. Okay, this one is a little bit harder to compare to y equals mx plus b. Right, it's a little bit weird. We have an x term, uh, but we don't have a y term. We do have a constant. These are confusing unless they're graphed. So most students find it easiest to make a graph of this or to just memorize what the slope is if all you have is an x term. So I'm going to make a graph of it. We have x, y, and x equals negative 2 means x is always negative 2, no matter what y equals. So here would be minus 2 for x. So whatever y is, doesn't matter. I can jump around on the y values. I'm always going to get x is negative 2. And they line up and make a straight vertical line. And if you remember, Vertical lines always have undefined slope. Oops. All right, so that would be the answer here for find the slope. And the reason the vertical lines have an undefined slope is because the slope is change in y divided by change in x. So the change in y going from one point to another here, and we can pick any points we want, let's say here to here, you know, we might get some change in y, whatever that is, some number. I'm just going to put number. It could be any number. Well, the x value on a vertical line is always the same x value. So you're always going to get 0 because there's no change in x. You can't divide by 0. That's why you get undefined when you have a vertical line.